Hello, everyone. For the second time in two weeks, Charter Communications finds itself in hot water with a long-standing programmer to its New York area cable systems. Univision filed a lawsuit against Charter last Friday over charges the nation's second largest cable system owner wants to unlawfully renegotiate its current carriage deal. That deal kicked in when Time Warner Cable owned these NYC systems, which were acquired by Charter last month. For now, however, Univision's channels have not been dropped. That's not the case with another nationally available service that, like Univision, outreach an audience of color, New Tang Dynasty Television. We just ran a promo for one of their cultural shows. Available full-time on TWC for over a decade and part-time earlier, Charter dropped New Tang June 30th when their current contract expired. New Tang is independently owned and noted for its unfiltered news coverage of controversial developments inside China, including the practice of organ harvesting. At this hour, Charter is yet to address in public why NTV was dropped and whether there was any efforts to reach a new carriage agreement. Incidentally, Time Warner has also dropped the network work in Los Angeles and Honolulu, Hawaii. Let's get the latest now from Matt Ganeza, New Tang's Vice President of Digital Programming. Matt, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me on. And also joining both of us is Larry Ong, a reporter for the Epic Times, a daily newspaper and website featuring extensive coverage of China and U.S.-China relations. Larry, welcome to BK Live. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Matt, how did this happen? Well, we've had this contract, like you said, with Time Warner for a long time, and we've had some disputes in the last recent contract. Um, but, you know, as Time Warner had told us, we have very good ratings. In fact, we have better ratings in New York than CNN, and yet Time Warner pays CNN in the neighborhood of more than uh, $10 million to feature CNN on their cable programming, but they want New Tang Dynasty Television to pay them. So, in other words, they want a minority network to subsidize the big networks, even though we have higher ratings. And basically, they told you day of June 30th, we're dropping. They didn't even tell us. They didn't even meet with us. They just cut the signal the day the contract expired. What they should have done is sat down with us, business to business, say, hey, let's figure out a way that we can resolve the disputes and work, you know, move forward with you. And they just didn't even reach out to us at all. And they didn't respond to our requests. Larry, we first learned about this from your reporting in Epic Times. Has Charter contacted you when you've tried to reach out to them? I've made a phone call to Charter. I've sent an email, but um, they still haven't gotten back to me yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very interesting, Matt, that in the Univision situation, immediately after Univision filed that lawsuit last Friday, Charter went public with their case. The Univision case on this is, we have already a deal with Time Warner Cable, and even though ownership has changed hands, we want that deal and the terms to stay in place. What Charter is saying is, no, we now own the systems, we should have an entirely new deal and not just carry over the current deal. Is that what happened here? Are you getting any sense that that's exactly what happened with Univision is what's happening here? Here with your network? The situation and the context is different, but I think it comes down to the same thing, which is, you know, it's a reflection perhaps of how Charter and Time Warner view minority networks and how they treat them. I mean, you inv invited someone from Charter to be on the show here, right? Mm. And where are they? Well, it's the same thing. We invited Charter to come sit with us and speak with us, and they won't even respond. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, I want to mention two disclosures right now. Charter was invited to be here today. We have not no response from them. The same thing with Epic Times. And secondly, Charter does carry Brick TV here in Manhattan and also via Manhattan Neighborhood Network in Manhattan. Uh, Larry, what has been the response of the Chinese American community in Brooklyn to what's been going on? Oh, the Chinese community in you know, uh, Flushing, uh, Manhattan's Chinatown, and Brooklyn, you know, they are um, pretty upset about it. Uh, like some of them only, uh, I mean, some of them are like more elderly uh, viewers. They they only get Time Warner. They only get an uh, NTD on Time Warner, and they, I mean they can't. They, they don't know how to go on like YouTube, you know, or some other avenues to watch NTD. So for them, it's a huge loss. Um, they they feel that you know, uh, NT, uh, New Tang Dynasty gives them you know like uh, uncensored news, which they, which they cannot get on like the other seventeen, you know, the other sixteen channels on Time Warner. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I think only NTD was the only only uh, Chinese uh, language media in New York to air uh, the uh, organ. I mean to to, uh, to cover the uh, live organ. Uh, the United States uh, House of Representatives uh, condemnation of the live organ harvesting that's going on in China. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, China is like uh, is taking you know. Removing the organs from uh, prisoners of conscience, the, the bulk of whom are these practitioners of Falun Gong, uh, this uh, uh, traditional Chinese spiritual uh, meditation exercise that's being like heavily persecuted in China. Because the Chinese, the because the uh, Communist mm. Party in China finds that controversial, sort of anti what they're doing, and that's why the persecution has taken place. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Chinese community leaders have also, you know, 
sent letters of support of NTD uh, to uh, the Charter. See, uh, I, I believe today, um, uh, Mr. Let me see. Uh, 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 sorry, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jerry Xiao, I believe, mm -hmm. from uh, a, a quasi-governmental uh, Chinese community organization in Manhattan's Chinatown, mm -hmm. uh, sent an email, uh, sent a letter to Charter CEO, uh, you know, saying like, you know, I believe that you know NTD and uh, Charter should you know, sit down, work out the work out the business deal, you know, and because we, we have to keep uh, NTD on the air because it's very important for his con con constitution, essentially. Is that yeah. happening the same way, Matt, in Los Angeles and Honolulu? Are, are you seeing similar outcries, similar petition drives, similar other ways to to get the word out to management? Absolutely. And just in the last two weeks, actually, we've got, you know, more than 4,000 signatures from viewers and concerned citizens saying, you know, you've got to put NTD back on the air. And there's a lot of community representatives, uh, government officials, assemblymen and, and women who've reached out to Charter and Time Warner and said, hey, get these guys back on. And they're not getting responses from Charter either. Mm -hmm. So what are you telling your viewers now who can't see you on cable? or satellite here, L.A., Honolulu. What are you telling me to do? Watch YouTube, uh, catch us online on our website. Well, what's the alternative right now? Well, you know, like you said, like our, our biggest concern is making sure people have access to Newton Dynasty. So we're on Verizon Fios, and if people can switch to Fios, if they have that option, they can do that. They can also get us over the air in New York. They can watch us online, ntdtv.com. And also some of our programming is available on YouTube. But, you know, understand that for a lot of the older Chinese demographic, Time Warner Cable is essentially their only option. So, you know, what we do is it's not just that we do entertainment programs that people like. We have news content that, you know, they really cannot get from any other Chinese TV network because so many of those other networks are influenced by the state-run propaganda from the Chinese Communist Party. Now, we should point out the time that a charter now runs about 17, 18 different channels, whether it's film, entertainment, aimed at the Chinese-American community here and elsewhere. And also, they do run China Central Television, which is the state-run uh, national television network, same with NHK Asia for Japan, BBC for Great Britain, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Larry, are, are you surprised that even after two weeks of a blackout, that the charter has not publicly responded the same way they have immediately with Univision? Is there some sort of is any anything behind? Are you hearing from sources like this is why Charter is not responding despite the public outcry? Uh, I haven't really heard from any sources, but I've spoken to a number of uh, you know, like uh, democracy activists, you know, uh, even community leaders, and of course some members of like the Chinese community. They, they a lot of them they just suspect they said, oh this it could be like the Chinese Communist Party is interfering in this. I mean, they don't really have any any basis for this for this kind of uh, like, um, suspicion. But um, uh, let, me, let me suggest yesterday, in fact, uh, the Sydney Morning Herald ran this uh, this article uh, talking about the, the Chinese government's you know uh, influence over messaging and uh, propaganda in the in the Chinese press in Australia, essentially. So, uh, in fact, an, an editor of a pro Chinese newspaper told Sydney Morning Herald. That over 95% of the press in uh, the Chinese language press in Australia is being controlled somehow by the Chinese government. So, I mean, with, with news like this, you know, you, it's not hard to imagine why, you know, like I said, democracy activists, community leaders, and members of the public are just they just suspect that this could be a Chinese, you know, a Chinese government that could be controlling this, you know. Yeah. Matt, what makes this situation so surprising is that, at least from the outside, appear that there was a very good relationship between Time Warner and your network. It had been carried full-time for over 10 years. Before that, it was carried on maybe public access or other channels, at least part-time, uh, from when the network started in the early, uh, early last decade. Give me a sense of the relationship the last year or so. I mean, has, has it been that way, or did, were there any inklings that perhaps something would happen when your contract expired? Well, you know, New Tongue Dynasty has good relationships with almost every cable network that we're on. But Time Warner is an exception here. And over the last couple of years, the relationship has gotten rocky, uh, you know, in part that we allege that they've violated some of the terms of our contract. And there's a legal dispute, which I, I won't get into. Uh, but we've tried to work with them. You know, we're not negative in the sense that we don't want to work with them. We really do, because we want to work with them to reach the Chinese community, to have a positive effect in the Chinese community. And we'd like Time Warner and Charter to be our partner. But their refusal to sit down with us to resolve this is really the key issue here.
just like their refusal to even come on the show. They won't sit down with us to resolve it. And that's really what we need right now. And you're saying also, to make sure we get you right, you're not saying, you know, this is a carriage fee issue. We are amenable to whatever the carriage situation you want in terms of fees. Or drop another network so that we stay on the air. We don't want them to drop networks. We're not even saying drop these propaganda Chinese networks. Look, this is America, freedom of speech. We respect that there's variety and there's choice for people. But we want New Tang Dynasty to also be a choice. And we want Charter to offer us a fair deal, the same kind of deal that they'd offer any other non-minority network with as high of ratings as we have. Mm -hmm. Larry, what do you make of the fact that in these last two weeks, we've had, boom, New Tang Dynasty, and now we have Univision? Both networks, both companies, programmers that are aimed at people of color, however you slice it. Do you find some irony or some craziness in the fact that, you know, here is Charter, which has said all along, we're going to have a very pro-diversity policy. We want more, from what I understand, more television networks and people of color on our, on our systems all over the country. And yet, here we go, a few, just a few weeks into their ownership of these systems, and bang, we have New Tang and Univision uh, in terms of a carriage dispute, or a dispute where one network's off the air and others Maybe. Mm. Well, I, I just believe if uh, if Charter, you know, if they if they, if they say something, then they, then they should, you know, uh, they should talk to Univision, they, they should talk to NTD, and they should just work out, you know, like a, like a fair deal with, with both, both parties. Then that way they, they can show that they are being true to whatever they promise. And that will have to be mm. the last word. Gentlemen, Matt, Larry, thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, we will continue by Charter to be on this program with their side of the story. You can follow Larry's coverage of this story and others online at theepictimes.com. On Wednesday night, Sundance TV premieres The A Word, a family-focused miniseries dealing with the raising of an autistic child. Some critics give this program advanced raves and declare it a contender for next year's Emmy Awards. Just got renewed by the BBC for a second season. Executive producer Sarah Johnson joins me in two hours on Tomorrow We Televise. Plus, this Friday, New BK Live co-host Rakia Mays offers her latest TV opinions. Plus, we'll detail crowdfunding website SceneSpark's first Ukraine venture, the new Voice Rally. That's today and Friday, 3 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. Oh, oh.